Good day. My name is Abdul Al Mamoun. I'm the Deputy Executive Director of the Muslim League of Fund America. Today I'm sitting with Mr. Charles Swift, who is the Director of the Constitutional Law Center for Muslims in America, as well as Leo Yu, who is an attorney at CLCMA. I want to talk to them about a recent case that they won. At, uh, the decision came out of the Sixth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals, where it was about an asylum case. The case is called Hossam F. V. Sessions. So I want to pose this question to Leo. Um, it's it's interesting. Why is it called Hossam F? Well, it's called Hossam, uh, Hossam F. It's obviously not uh, our client's real name. Uh, our client has family members remaining in Syria, and his family has been uh, targeted by um, the Bashar uh, administration for decades. He doesn't want to um, compromise his family's position in Syria. Therefore, we filed a motion to redact his names, and the court granted. Wow, that's um, that's very um, surreal. Uh, so, Charlie, I just wanted to ask you: This Sessions is the Attorney General? Yes, he is. Uh, in this case, the Attorney General is in charge of immigration uh, and the immigration decisions on whether you get asylum, uh, permanent residency, or citizenship. Uh, statute Congress originally has it, but they've delegated it to the Attorney General. And in this case, uh, we sued the Attorney General of the United States uh, based on decisions made. Yes, we did. So, Charlie, uh, who is Mr. Hussama? Why is this case so significant that it had to go to Jeff Sessions? Well. I think we need to backtrack and understand the facts of the case. Uh, the facts, w what happened in this case is he originally came here on a fiancé visa and uh, got married, and then obtained his permanent residency in the United States, and then about two years after that, uh, when he was returning from visiting family members overseas, he was stopped and put into detention. He was put into detention because they argued that his passport the government claimed that his passport had been uh, fabricated by ISIS. Uh, they strip him of his permanent residency and then deport him uh, outside the United States. Uh, the center took over representation after once he was in deportation proceedings. Uh, during deportation proceedings, uh, what came out was that he had his father because his father couldn't get a passport had obtained you know, through normal means had obtained it through back channel means, but it hadn't come from ISIS. It most likely come from a sympathetic official who took an extra one. But Syria reported it as stolen. The judge found that he didn't have an authorized uh, uh, passport, but that he was eligible for a waiver, and further that he was entitled to asylum independently of all of these claims. And so the judge ultimately uh, did take a, agreed that his green card should go away, his permanent residency, but he gave him asylum, the opportunity to get his green card back after he reapplied, et cetera, through the process. And we thought that that would be the end of it, except it was appealed up to the Board of Immigration Appeals. And the Board of Immigration Appeals, despite all the facts found by the judge, uh, overturned the decision, finding A, that he shouldn't have gotten a waiver, and B, that the uh, that as a discretionary manner, this man shouldn't get asylum, even though he was clearly facially eligible for it. It was uh, actually the asylum statutes were almost as if they were written for Hussam F, because you know he truly faced uh, not just persecution, he faced imminent execution if he was returned to Syria. Leo, I want to pose this question to you. What did uh, the court hold in this case? The court's opinion can um, divide it in two parts. The first part is about asylum. The second part is about the waiver. And the immigration attorneys would call the waiver the A1H waiver. For, for the asylum part, the core decision, the core um, um, argument in this part is whether the BIA has abused its discretion in denial. Uh, our client's uh, uh, asylum application? And the answer was yes, the BIA abuse is discretion. What, what is the BIA just? Uh... Board of Immigration Appeals. Okay. Uh, and the court held that, well, uh, while the BIA has 
it brought discretion in denial of people's ap uh, a uh, application for asylum. But the BIA must follow its own precedents. And if we read the BIA's precedent, it's rather clear that uh, our client deserves this asylum because there is no erasious conduct. And erasious conducts are usually found when there is either criminal conduct or a fraud. And our client has neither of them. And for the waiver part, it's, it's, to be honest, it's, it's very complicated. It's very long. I'm not going to just break it down piece by piece here. But the core part of uh, that um, ruling is that the court has jurisdiction to decide whether the BIA has violated the law. So there was discretion in, involved in this case? Yes. In both the waiver and in the uh, uh, part uh, uh, on the asylum. Okay. Uh, the court's decision was 3-0 on the asylum and 2-1 to one on the waiver portion. So there's oh. more than one uh, judge in this case? Yes, there were three judges on the court's panel. Okay. So what's going to happen to Mr. F now that uh, this case is uh, over? Oh, this case is not quite over yet because now the uh, court actually reversed the BIA's ruling and remanded the case back to the BIA. So there will be further uh, process at the BIA part. But even before that, uh, I think the government will probably file a motion for the to ask the court to reconsider. And in appellate practice, that's that is that usually means the government will file a motion for a uh, we call it rehearing on bank, which means to ask all the available co uh, judges on the Sixth Circuit to look at this case one more time and to, to render another decision. This kind of motions is very hard to win for the government because it usually requires this opinion, this current opinion to contradict with the Supreme Court's ruling or uh, create some major uh, circuit splits and neither of them appear here. Yeah, I agree. We'll see whether the government files this yeah. appeal. But you know, it, it shouldn't under attack. This was a significant victory. Uh, it's significant for uh, Mr. Hassam F. It's also significant for all Muslims. Uh, and how, how is that so, significant for the well, Muslims? Because discretion is the principal tool that is being used by the Trump, just Trump and Sessions, uh, in trying to limit immigration. Uh, the recent Muslim ban case was about discretion. Ultimately, what their discretion was under the statute. In that case, the Supreme Court found that they could do it. In this case, asylum, which is critical to many of the person seeking and something that the president clearly opposes. Sixth Circuit found that in they're, they're still bound by all of the precedents and rules that have been set up regarding asylum. So, and that we uh, eligible persons are going to receive asylum. And they empowered, importantly, administrative law judges uh, in this process, the immigration judges, to make the factual findings and didn't permit those factual findings to be twisted. Too often, we've seen recently since, since the inauguration, that the facts don't matter. It's just what I say they are. Well, the Sixth Circuit said the facts matter, and we're not going to allow the facts in this particular case to be twisted, and that and will serve as a gatekeeper to make sure that the facts aren't twisted, and that's a big deal uh, in, in the current environment, and we're delighted to have been part of it. With that said, uh, Charlie made an excellent point. How uh, important was it for Mr. F uh, to get a, a representative um, like the center to help him uh, legal representation uh, with, with such a uh, monumental case, especially when it comes to asylum? In my opinion, it's almost impossible for any aliens who are in Mr. F's situation to prevail in a court of appeals without uh, counsel. And actually, right after the publication of this case, a uh, very famous uh, immigra retired immigration judge, Judge Paul Smith, wrote a commentary uh, on his blog. And one of the major points he made is just this entire case, when we read the the entire procedural history, you realize how hard it is to prevail on immigration matter. And it is how impossible for aliens to win if they don't have um, adequate representation. So that is something uh, we really help to be a part of. So Charlie, why did you take this case? Uh well, there were several reasons. One, it presented a clear injustice. Two, 
uh, we understood very early on that it had the opportunity to set precedences. When we take a look at it, we looked at this case and we thought, given the allegations, the government's unlikely to settle. They're unlikely to give up, and they certainly haven't given up to this point. And that's important, because if we're going to win and set precedences, if they, you know, sometimes we take a case and it's great for the client, but it doesn't set a precedent. This, kind of, this case worked out where it was great for the client, and it set a precedent, and that's what what's important. What was that precedence? Well, it's the precedents that it sets are inside the uh, Sixth Circuit, as Leo outlined, uh, uh, which sets out limitation rules that say, okay, to the Board of Immigrations, you can't disregard your earlier decision. Uh, and if you do, we'll overturn you. That's an abuse of discretion. And that inside the waiver, you're uh, in applying the waiver uh, provisions uh, in the statute, you have to be logical and you can't disregard the factual findings of the administrative law judge in so doing. Those are important precedences uh, in this day and age in particular because that's not what's been going on uh, in the Sessions and Trump administration's uh, approach to immigration. They want to do what they want to do. Uh, so that's very, very important. And we viewed this at the early onset that it had an opportunity. This was a sympathetic client who was clearly entitled to the right, needed the representation, and we could have a good chance, we believed, and it turned out to be true, to uh, obtain favorable law. This case also fell within our, the primary of what we take. Uh, this case, because of the government's allegations about ISIS that turned out to be baseless, had a unique aspect of national security. What we find in the immigration courts is that even when somebody has an attorney and uh, the government says, well, this is national security, this is ISIS, this is Al-Qaeda, this is that, this is the other thing, even if there's no merit to what they say, most attorneys are, you know, they, they go, okay, that's the end of my representation. And this is beyond me. I don't want to get involved in that. That's where we start getting involved. It's not that we're representing members of ISIS. We weren't. He wasn't. But the mere allegations are enough to keep uh, them from having representation under the best of circumstances. And it means the government is going to give extraordinary effort. So we try and match our resources to that kind of a case. So this, to summarize, was a victory for due process. It was. It absolutely, due process came out. And it, most importantly in the victory for due process in this is that the administrative law judge, the process that happened in front of a judge who heard, spent two days hearing evidence, who heard from Mr. F, his wife, his family members, expert witnesses, uh, saw all the testimony, made factual findings and came to determination. What the Sixth Circuit of Appeal, Court of Appeals said in the end is, that matters. And that's the process that's going to hold unless there's an extraordinary reason for it not to hold. And so I, it was a victory for due process. And it strengthens the role of administrative law judges. And Lord knows in these trying times, they need their hands strengthened. So I want to thank you, both of you. Thank you for joining me today. Um, to my audience today, I want you to understand and be very proud of the work that the Muslim League of America has been funding for the past 17 years. The Constitutional Law Center for Muslims in America has been taking on cases that sets precedents. Again, they focus on immigration, criminal, civil, and nonprofit compliance issues on the federal level. They have been making uh, impact, and as you heard today, they have won a monumental case that will make a precedence for days to come. If you want to find out more information about the work they do, or if you need help in this issue or any other uh, issues that they work with, you can always visit their website at www.clcma.org. And if you like the work that the Muslim League of Fund America does and want to support us, please visit our website at www.mlfa.org. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.